An important thing to know about your soils is the cation exchange capacity of the soil. We're gonna talk about that today. Well, what is cation exchange capacity? It's the holding capacity of your soil. It's basically a measurement of the type of clay in your soil, the amount of clay in your soil, and the amount of organic matter. The higher the number, the more your soil can hold of everything, whether that's chemical, water, fertilizer, you name it. All right, so let's talk about this cation exchange capacity because you may say, well, if I've got a bigger number and I can hold more nutrients out there, that's gotta be a good thing, right? Well, guess what? Guess where the world record soybeans have been grown? Guess where the world record corn has been grown? In low cation exchange capacity soils. Now, I'm not saying that the ideal cation exchange capacity for you is five to 10. That's pretty light sandy soil in most cases. No, that's, that may not be the ideal for you, but it can be managed well and still produce high yielding crops. Okay, so here's the number one reason why you have to know your cation exchange capacity on every field you've got. It's really nitrogen. How much nitrogen can you apply to your soil at any one time? When I've asked farmers that question over the years, I'll get responses along these lines. Well, I have heavy soil, so I can put quite a bit out there. Well, how much is that exactly? Well, I don't know, quite a bit. I'm sure I'm fine. Okay, well, when you have that kind of response, then that really makes me question, are we overdoing it or not? Okay, what's the biggest issue that we've got in the United States today as farmers? And a lot of people say, oh, it's crop prices or it's weed resistance. No, I don't think so. I think the biggest issue we have as farmers is our relationship with non-farmers. And if non-farmers see us over applying nitrogen so much so that it ends up in the water, now we've got a real problem. And guess what you and I are gonna have as farmers? We're gonna have a lot more regulation going forward. I don't want that, and I assume you don't want that either. So here's a real simple measurement that you can use. Cation exchange capacity, get that on your soil test. Then multiply that number times 10. That'll tell you the rough holding capacity of your soil. Is that gonna be exact? No, it's not. But that will at least give you a rough idea. It'll get you relatively close, a lot better than saying, oh, I have heavy ground or I have light ground, okay? So let's just say, for example, your cation exchange capacity is 16. Well, 16 times 10 is 160. Let's say you're going for 250 bushel corn and you wanna put 250 pounds of nitrogen out there. Can you do it in one shot? Not a chance. Okay, no way your soil is going to hold all that. So what we would suggest is look at how much nitrogen is already in your soil, subtract that off of your 160 number. Let's say you had 40 already sitting in the soil. Subtract that off 160, that leaves 120. The most you should apply to your soil is 120 pounds. That's it. Okay, and even that is probably pushing it a little bit. So we just want you to know the cation exchange capacity and then spoon feed your nitrogen so we don't end up with these water quality concerns. Now that may lead you to be thinking, I, I need to increase my cation exchange capacity in my soil. The way you can do it is by building organic matter levels. We've talked about this in the past. You can reduce tillage, plant crops with more roots, utilize manure and compost, those types of steps, those can help you build organic matter levels over time, but it certainly doesn't happen overnight. All right, so in lieu of you building your organic matter and doing it significantly here over the next few years, let's just talk about you working with the soil you've got today. Let's say you do have lighter soil. Let's say it's an eight CEC. You've already got 20 pounds sitting in that soil, so you can only apply 60 pounds and you go, oh my goodness, I'm gonna to have to apply nitrogen four times during the growing season to get to my 250 bushel level of nitrogen. In other words, getting 250 pounds out there. Yes, that's what we're gonna suggest you do. And let's take it a step further and say, I want you to use a nitrogen stabilizer along with that to further protect your nitrogen. We don't want nitrogen loss and neither do you. Not only is it not a good thing for the environment, but it's lost dollars. Just look at it from a dollars and cents perspective. You don't want to lose your nitrogen. That's why you have to know your cation exchange capacity and you have to follow through on all this. Let's take the opposite uh, side of the spectrum here, Brian. Let's go to the really high CECs. On Ag PhD Radio, we recently talked to a farmer north of the border up in Canada. He had a CEC of around 40. What are some things in a high CEC soil that you'll need to do for management? Well, first of all, you've got to understand that's got tremendous water holding capacity. In fact, too much water holding capacity. In most cases, we see really poor drainage when that cation exchange capacity is upwards of 40. So you're probably going to need to add tile. It's very likely your calcium levels are low, which seems strange, but if you've got tremendously high magnesium levels, a lot of times that leads to higher CEC levels. So 
what that tells me is we've got to get more calcium in the soil, we've got to get more porosity in the soil. When you do that, you might actually find your cation exchange capacity starting to come down, and if nothing else, you are going to see just better drainage, better root growth, more oxygen in that soil. That's going to help a lot. So yes, that's the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I'm not worried about nitrogen leaching. Okay, we're not going to have any environmental issues in a 40 CEC soil, no way. What we're going to have for nitrogen loss there would probably be denitrification. So in other words, your nitrogen gets in the ground, there's all kinds of water sitting there with all that magnesium and everything and the high CEC, so then you're, you're subject to risk of loss for nitrogen that way. Now, again, that's not going to hurt anybody, but still, we don't want to have nitrogen loss any possible way. Our topic for today has been cation exchange capacity. It is a measurement of the holding capacity of your soil, its ability to hold nutrients and hold water. Farmers with high cation exchange capacities and with low cation exchange capacities can be very successful, but it does require management on either end. One other thing that requires a little management is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. <music>